third perspective comes from uh, Heather Leesaw and Steve McGecken from the Australian Data Archive. We're okay, the Australian Data Archive, which is a, a social science research data archive. Um, and our mission is to be a national service for the collection and preservation of digital research data and to make these available to academics, governments, and other researchers. Uh, we hold about 5,000 data sets in over 1,500 studies um, of all areas of social science from social attitudes, surveys, censuses, aggregate statistics, administrative data, and many other sources, both qualitative and quantitative. Our data holdings are sourced from academics, government, and private sector. So we undertook the process with ANS um, as part of the trusted repositories. We originally started um, under the data seal of approval before they had actually combined fully with the World Data Service or systems. Um, so originally we were the um, DSA and then we became the DSA WDS. When we found out that they were moving to the core trust seal, we delayed our implementation of which guidelines to take. Um, we officially started the DSA WDS in March of 2017 and submitted our application in April of 2017. We were due to have a review from our reviewers in May, but it didn't actually arrive until August. Um, then we made our corrections to this. We sent it back in and then we got another um, aspect of corrections, did the other round of corrections and submitted and finalized in February of 2018. So slightly less than a year's uh, length of process, but we are a core trust seal uh, repository now. We did use the November 2016 WDS, uh, DSA WDS guidelines, um, which weren't, weren't as detailed as what is given in the core trust seal, and there were no people to look at for reference, as in Michaela had said she looked at others for reference. There was no one to look at for reference for this new core trust seal. Um, so we kind of flew from what people had done in the DSA WDS and uh, flew blind for a bit. So when we went through the process, which was a very useful process for self-assessment, we identified four of the guidelines, which we set at a level three, which is the implementation phase of process, which were data integrity and authenticity, the guideline 10, which was preservation and planning, guideline 15, which was technical infrastructure, and guideline 16. Later in assessment with one of our reviewers, we also changed guideline nine, which is documented storage, down to a level three. Everything else we had set at a level four for our repository. Um, our repository has been around for about 35 years, um, coming up on 40 years, so we do have quite a few procedures in, in place. So some of the challenges that we found doing the core trust seal process. Um, when we initially undertook it, there was no recommendation of what a minimum requirement would be for any of the guidelines. So we didn't know if we'd set it at a three, if that meant we wouldn't be able to get a core trust seal or not. Um, or if it's if you set it at a one, can you still get a core trust seal? Um, there doesn't seem to be a minimum requirement that we have ever found. Um, the extended guidelines do detail things a little bit better nowadays uh, for those who are undertaking it in the future. And we weren't sure if you had to respond to every aspect of all of the sub questions in a guideline or just to the overall arching guideline. We also found that there was a complex interplay between the relevant documents required for a guideline and those for other guidelines so that one document may respond to up to four different guidelines or it may respond to only one guideline. Um, and also, we found it difficult for providing evidence from documents which were not in the public domain. Like the other two, we had to go through our own websites and find out what we did have forward facing, what we had internally facing, and which aspects of those we feel we can now put into an outward facing um, website or wiki page. Um, there should be 
all aspects should be um, outward facing, but if things have to be inward facing, there seems to be some um, basis that the core trust seal can deal with that. Um, the assessors did not indicate in our original um, guidelines that you had to have a timeline for things that were in process. The new guidelines do state that you have to list a guideline of when you plan to have your implementation in place by. So we had to add that in our final version of when we planned to have these items forward facing and our new website uh, up and running. And we had to come up, we had no idea when we originally started the process what the process entailed and what time frames it was going to take. Uh, we were unclear if it was going to take a few months or a year. It ended up taking us a year, but the core trust seal does seem to be coming along as an organization much better so that timelines should move a bit quicker now. So from our experience, um, we found that doing as Michaela and Andrea had done, going through and finding out what is in the public domain already and what can safely be put into the public domain is a a uh, good first step for any repository undertaking the core trust seal. Um, and how to cite the items which are out of the public domain in the private elements um, is still an area of question uh, which the core trust seal is dealing with. We also would like to know how to deal with items that are out of our direct control, such as funding models, um, infrastructure and governance, being the part of a larger university, or as CSIRO, part of a governmental body, um, and Andrew being parts of multiple institutions, how do you fit into their governance models? How do you fit into the infrastructure? And how is this relayed to the core trust seal um, with these complexities? Also, the risk management section of the core trust seal we found a bit difficult because they kept referencing almost ISO standard. Um, requirements and to undertake an ISO standard for a risk assessment to do a base core trust seal uh, seemed a bit overkill for us. So finding some risk management standards that are free and in the public domain uh, would be very useful. And we've actually answered the final one, which is the guidelines are freely available for self-assessment without paying to obtain the seal. Um, you can just undertake the core trust deal as a self-assessment for your repository. So you can define what your repository is, where your boundaries are, um, and undertake the assessment. So in the Australian context, um, these aren't necessarily only in the Australian context. We did find that they relate to other repositories worldwide, but the complexity of how institutions and repositories, one institution, may encompass multiple repositories or one repository may encompass multiple institutions and how this affects your governance, your funding, your security and all of those aspects as well as things that are in the national framework. So things that are involved in our national roadmaps, um, how these play into the core trust seal and how they're also out of the control of the individual repositories. Um, infrastructure frameworks, infrastructure that is provided by your um, host institution and the government frameworks of host institutions, which are not easily explainable in a core trust seal. Um, so these are not necessarily, as I said, Australian specific, but more to the repository sector because the repository sector is a very varied um, sector with multiple institutions, multiple repositories playing different roles.